we welcome in this morning Dr. Matthew Howie. And uh, Dr. Howie is um, a, a guy we kind of go to here on COVID a lot. He's a medical director of the York City Bureau of Health, and he joins us here on WSBA. Dr. Howie, always good to have you aboard. Good morning to you. Hey, good morning to you, too. Glad to be here. You know, we've seen a lot of unique ways lately to get people vaccinated. We were reading a story last week about um, Bram Stoker's castle uh, in Transylvania that was the basis for the uh, Dracula uh, stories, and they they were using that as a vaccination center for COVID and then giving out free tours of the castle, which I thought was kind of unique. You know, it was kind of a different way of doing it, you know, getting stuck but not with fangs instead with a, with a needle. Um, we, we read about in Ohio today, they now have, they're going to have five straight drawings for a million dollar lotteries for people to go get their vaccinations. You qualify by doing that. So people are, are putting all kinds of gimmicks out there right now on getting vaccinated from COVID. Uh, what do you make of all that? Do you, do, you, do you get a kick out of that? I mean, a lot of, a lot of governors are saying, Hey, if you're a business, come up with a gimmick, you know, get people to come in and give, give free stuff. I think in Jersey, they're giving away a free beer, which, you know, it's kind of cheap in my, my book, but, uh, your thoughts about that. Uh, I think that, that we have to get really creative on this. I mean, uh, we're, we're finding that the people who are hesitating to get vaccines uh, do it for a host of reasons. But a lot of it really is just, hey, um, I haven't gotten to it yet. It's really not a big uh, moral or scientific concern they have. So getting people off of that fence, um, it's an important thing to keep doing. Um, you know, I know the Philadelphia Flyers actually gave away some free tickets. Um, if you went to one of their games and got vaccinated. So mm-hmm. there's definitely uh, a lot of opportunity out there for creativity. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. And, you know, people, you know, nobody likes to go get a shot. I mean, I don't know of anybody who said, eh, you know, although I, I was ready to go when, when these things came up. I thought, OK, I can't wait to get mine get done. I was done in February. But, uh, yeah, it's it's just so, you know, beyond that, let's let's take the gimmicks away for a second. I mean, you know, I, a lot of times I think gimmicks are for kids, but. What's what's the right reason to get a shot? I mean, I, I, that sounds like a really simple question, but obviously there is a number of people who who are not, and we're seeing centers closing down. We're seeing people left with a you know kind of a surplus of shots right now, things like that. What's the reason to go get a shot? Well, I mean, for me, there's three reasons. One, uh, you're protecting yourself from future exposure, and then that's something that, that that resonates with some people. For other folks, it doesn't resonate as much. Uh, the second one I would say is protecting those around you, the loved ones. That even if you're um, you're you're kind of like, eh, for me it's not that important, but you know I, I'll be mildly affected. I'm young. Um, I'm, I'll take my chances. You know, the older folks who live with you, the more vulnerable folks that live with you, that's an important uh, population to protect, and that's what herd immunity is about anyway. Um, and the lastly, I would say like. Um, we got to get to our new normal somehow. Um, and I think uh, at some point, if you want to travel, at some point you want to actually feel like, oh, my gosh, um, th- there is something resembling what uh, I would expect normal to be. This is, can we get there? there? There's no other magic way through this. Um, so those are the big three. You know, we're watching uh, – I was watching a baseball game the other night. Uh, the Orioles and the Mets were on. And so the pitcher, they're gonna, the manager is going to make a change, and he comes walking out of the dugout. And he walks out to the mound, and all these guys gather around from, you know, the infield and the pitcher and the manager. The manager has a mask on. Everybody else has masks off. And I'm standing there going, is this the height of ridiculousness? I mean, I, 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 mean, I, I stood there and looked at that, and I said, this is, this is insane. What, what, so these other guys somehow are not going to get it, or they're not going to get it, or whatever. And the manager, now I realize the manager came out of more of an enclosed space, and yet it's still outside. And from my understanding, no one outside is getting this stuff. What are your thoughts about that when you see those kind of things? Is there a different way to look at it? No, I, I don't think there is. I, I think we all have those moments where we're like, uh, do I need to wear it or not wear it? And for what reason? Um, again, it speaks to how we haven't made that complete transition to, you know, um, a, a COVID with vaccine world versus just a COVID world. Um, you know, I have to think uh, half the time, multiple times a day personally. All right. Is this a mass situation or is this a not mass situation? Hmm. Uh, I look forward to the time where I don't have to have as much thought or uh, creativity to go with that. When you look at uh, herd immunity, and and a lot of people have talked about this, Many, and you and I were talking some months earlier about uh, this one uh, associate professor, I think at Johns Hopkins, who said, we'll have herd immunity by May 31st. Well, it looks like we're we're kind of moving in that direction, but uh, don't know if we're going to have it by May 31st. But my my point is, there was was a lot of, of... downing of the numbers before the shots really came in obviously they have helped to speed that up but is there a natural herd immunity that was taking place then add on the vaccine uh, immunity uh, and a lot of people are saying hey you know we already had herd immunity 
or we have it now. What are your thoughts when you hear those kind of arguments or those kind of uh, thoughts thrown around? Uh, it's not there yet. Um, but actually, both of those things are contributing to the decrease in cases and probably mm-hmm. – um, a little bit of uh, environmental change is, is, is contributing to this as well. So um, absolutely, vaccines are very effective. And then for folks who get the, the uh, actual infection, there is an immunity there that contributes to herd immunity as well. That immune response doesn't seem to be quite as strong as under the vaccine, but it does, does contribute. And, and honestly, it's tough to figure out how many folks actually have had the disease percentage-wise in our population. Um, I just got some uh, information from my 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 FE person, my epidemiologist right. in the city, saying we have about 10 percent of the population who have tested positive. Best guesstimates, and it's a guesstimate, is that that's probably underrepresenting it by a factor of two to three. So if you say, hey, 10 percent really represents 30 percent, and then we're talking about, you know, in that city, you know, we're also talking about 35, 40 percent uh, vaccination rates. And then I think you see the decrease in cases we're seeing now in, in, in a proper context. And the other thing is to remember, this is uh, absolutely a disease that um, is, is a winter month phenomenon. Right. We saw it in on winter months, but um, we think going forward, it's going to be a seasonal um, a seasonal virus. Right. And I, I, I think you're totally uh, right on that. You know, it's interesting. When I go to the city, I notice more people wearing masks out in the open than I do when I go around the county. It's, it's, I, I, mean, I eat dinner a lot in the city. I use the city quite a bit. And uh, I'm always noticing that people are much more careful wearing masks down there. Have you seen the same thing? Uh, I, I would agree. Um, you know, I, I think we worked on getting the message out in the city. I don't know if it, uh, I don't know how to explain why that uptake has been better than others. Uh, perhaps uh, the experience uh, in, in certain uh, populations right. has been such that, you know, I think uh, you, when you want to change behavior, um, uh, that personal experience or somebody that you know absolutely impacts that. Um, so, you know, people took opioids a lot more seriously once we got to the point where I have a friend or a relative or um, a coworker who has a personal story uh, with a relative of theirs, right. or a close person of theirs. Um, and I think we've gotten to that place with COVID um, where we, we know people, um, and especially the older population. You know, they know people who've been affected. They know people who've died. Um, so it's a much easier uh, sell in that population. No but question why about it. More, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, much closer to home in terms of a community feeling on that, I think. And finally, for people who have been vaccinated, Dr. Howie, many are saying, okay, I've been vaccinated. Do I really need a mask anymore? You know, I'm not worried about getting it. I'm not worried about giving it. Uh, what are your thoughts about that as you talk to people out there? You know, I had a conversation with a friend yesterday at a meeting. Uh, we actually had an in-person meeting, although we all distanced a little bit. And, and her first question to me when I walked in the door was like, when can I get rid of this stinking mask? Mm-hmm. And, and I, I was like, I completely understand. And I think that's the goal we're getting to. Um, I mean, the governor's put out the 70 percent um, as the uh, as the mark um, when we'll be able to go without masks at that point. Um, and I think that combined with some decreased transmission rates, which are heading the right direction, um, and we'll start seeing adjustments. And just like we've seen adjustments in in um, uh, the, uh, meeting requirements, we're going to see um, uh, adjustments when it comes to the mask mandate as well. Um, I just can't predict exactly when. Dr. Matthew Howie, always good to have you aboard. Thank you for the information. You're always a font of information for us, and we look forward to talking to you again very soon. And keep up the great work, okay? Thank you. Appreciate Thank you, Dr. Howie.